Hello everyone, and welcome to Matt's Data Bits, where I discuss everything from data quality, to data testing, to data analysis, to data science. It's all about the data. For today's trainer, we're going to discuss SQL Server Management Studio and the new troubleshooting reports. What? SQL Server Management Studio has built-in troubleshooting reports? Who knew? They've had them for years and I just never noticed. But once I dig in, dug into them, there's some really powerful features that you should know about and use. So where are the reports? How come I've never seen them before? Well, you just never look close enough. If you open up SQL Server Management Studio and let's look at server reports. So you pick a server. I obscured the server name here and some of the unnecessary menu commands. But if you pick the server and then you right click and you hover down to reports and then that'll pop up standard reports and then that'll pop up the list and look at all those reports and that's just the server reports. There's also database reports and reports on other objects and custom reports, just lots and lots of reports. And all these reports are actually embedded SSRS reports built into SQL Server. Similarly, the database reports are underneath the server, underneath the database, right click a database, pops up reports just like the prior server reports. Then you select the standard reports and then there's a whole bunch of database specific or database flavored reports that you can choose from. So lots and lots of reports, lots of functionality. So for the rest of this presentation, there's going to be a navigation key at the top of some of the slides, and that'll tell you what to click to view a report. So, it, and it ties to the menus in the example here below. So if it says right click the server, then you're gonna right click the server. And then if it says hover over reports, then you're gonna hover over the reports item from the pop-up menu. And if it says hover over standard reports, and you're gonna move the mouse pointer over, hover over standard reports, and then the server dashboard, finally you're just gonna move up and select the server dashboard report. So that's how this little green bar navigation key works on about five or six of the upcoming slides that will tell you how to get to the reports that we're discussing. The first SQL Server Management Studio troubleshooting report that we're gonna look at is the server dashboard. It's a level set, if you will to see what's going on at a high level on the server. So the server dashboard, to get to it, right click on the server you're interested in, hover over reports, hover over standard reports, and then click the server dashboard report. I don't use this very frequently. I use it for configuration details to determine when the server was last rebooted. That's handy sometimes. I'll look at what the version name is a SQL Server if I don't already know and it's a new one to me and then some other metrics up here under configuration details. There's also activity details but that's not all that helpful because there's better reports coming up in a minute but as long as you're here you could look and see well how many active sessions are there, how many active databases, how many idle sessions are logged in etc and then there's some charts, pie charts off the screen that you can look at as well. Next up are the performance dashboard reports. There's many of them. The next 15 slides deal with them. They're very powerful. These are the ones that I use frequently. So the performance dashboard is just one report, but it's really a wrapper that sits on top of several other reports you can click down through. So to get to the performance dashboard report, right click on the server you're interested in, hover over reports, hover over standard reports, and then click performance dashboard. First up in green here is a little chart that shows the last 15 minutes of CPU activity. This was yesterday evening when I took the screenshot. Not very busy on a test server, not much going on late at night to be expected. Uh, it'll tell you SQL processes and other processes. Section two is the waiting request. There's nothing really to show. There wasn't anyone on, so there wasn't a lot of contention, no blocking or deadlocking. But if there were, you would see some of that activity in the chart here. The next two sections are the ones that are really valuable. First up is the current activity. And we're going to have some slides on that where you're going to click the user requests or click the user sessions and drill down to reports that are handy. And then after that is the historical information. A bunch of slides on that. So you can click down through weights and latches and I.O. statistics and expensive queries by CPU, etc. It's just fantastic troubleshooting reports all accessible from right here. Basically just a right click off of the server and you just start drilling down to get to the details to find queries that are running slow by CPU or using a lot of RAM, etc. It's just it's really powerful. And you could you could get to these things through back end queries, but why? If it's all built in right here, go ahead and use what's available. So in the performance dashboard in the lower left corner, there's the current activity section, and there's the user requests and the user session links. 
there's a little bit of details about the active user session uh, requests that are running versus the user sessions. So we are going to click the user requests, click, and it's going to pop up a report. And the current request actually tells you by active session ID and the current time what the query text is, scrambled anything that's meaningful, and it tells you that it's running, tells you if there's a wait type, if it's blocked, it gives you a whole bunch of details. So it's fantastic. You can see exactly what's running on the server with this report. Pretty handy if you're trying to troubleshoot something or even if you're just trying to get a feel for what's going on. Or if you're trying to uh, watch an application and see what SQL's running behind the scenes, you could do this. You know, profiler's available, sure, but you could do it this way too. And on any of these sub-reports, whenever you're done, you can just click this little blue button that's up in the left and it'll return you to the parent performance dashboard report. So now we've returned to the performance dashboard and once again we're looking at the current activity section but now we're going to click the user sessions link to pop up that report and here it is. So this one gives us all the current activity. It's like SP who if you were to execute an SP who in the query window and it'll show you the session IDs, whether they're sleeping or running, the CPU time, memory usage, etc. And I've blocked out anything that's security risk, but it'll have the login name in detail with the domain. It'll have the program name that's running for that session ID. It'll have the host name and there's even details out to the right. It's just a really powerful report if you're not accustomed to using SP Who, which will give you pretty much the same information. Clicking the show system sessions will show you session IDs 1 to 50, which are just back-end SQL Server sessions doing routine jobs, processes. And when you're done doing this report, go ahead and click the little blue button that's up here off in the upper left of the screen, and that'll return you to the parent. So now we're back at the parent performance dashboard report, and we're looking at the lower right section, the historical information, and we're going to walk through some of these different sub-reports, starting with weights. So go ahead and click weights, and up pops the historical weights sub-report. And at the top is a bar chart with the cumulative wait time by weight category. So here we can see that network I.O., hard disk activity, network activity, that's the biggest bottleneck on this particular test server. And it's not surprising because of the level that we purchased for that EC2 server instance. And so the CPU parallelism is down a little bit lower, but it's up there. Locks, buffer I.O., CPU down here. There's the CPU as well. RAM doesn't have a RAM issue. That's way down there. So it's kind of, it, it helps you troubleshoot where the performance bottlenecks are by looking at this. And, and as well, down below is the data behind the chart. So network I.O., the exact number of weights. And this is all cumulative since the last time you booted, rebooted the server. The wait time in seconds, cumulative, and the percent of all wait time. So a handy report when you're trying to get an overview of, of the historical weights on that particular box since the last reboot. Once we're done with the prior report, sub-report, we click the little blue arrow on the upper left and that returns us to the parent performance dashboard report where once again we're looking in the lower right corner at the historical information and we're going to click the IO statistics button. And that pops up the historical IO sub-report and there's three sections to this. So when this pops up, we look at the database names, all scrambled here, and we look at the percent reads, and on this particular test server, yeah, there's one database that has the bulk of the activity, 90%. That's really the one we're interested in, and maybe this second tier database here. But it really lets us see what's going on as far as I.O. is concerned. It's got the reads, it's got the writes, times, percent, etc. Now, if I scroll down lower on the page, I can expand the top 20 objects here that have uh, physical I.O. issues. And it's really neat. This link is active. If I were to click this link on missing indexes to go see what's the recommendation for that object that has an I.O. performance issue, let me go see what its suggestion is for the missing index. I click on the blue link and the bottom section of the report gives me all those details. It gives me the average impact, uh, speaking of which, in the notes here on the same report, it says that the score right there should be above 100,000 before you take action. Well, 435 is way below that. 
So whatever this proposed index is, and it's actually create index on table, blah, blah, blah. It has all the SQL. You could just go copy, paste, and execute it. Really neat. But uh, don't take any action because it's less than 100,000. And if you indexed everything, well, that's you're going to do more harm than good. But pretty neat. Pretty neat technique. Let's go back up and back up. So historical I.O. report. You can scroll down through, get a feel for what databases have issues. Scroll down further, get a feel for exactly what objects have the biggest impact. And then click on the yeses to see what the suggestions are for making the improvement. Pretty neat report. When you're done, click the blue arrow that's up at the upper left, and that'll return us to the parent performance dashboard. So now we've returned back to the parent performance dashboard report. We're once again in the lower right historical information section, but now we've moved down to the expensive queries uh, subsection, and we're going to look at iCPU, and then we'll look at some of the others as well. But why does this matter? Well, because when you're looking at expensive queries by anything, it returns the exact SQL of the given session of the given session that was running that was really slow or had a lot of logical reads or whatever. And why that matters is because once you've identified the SQL, you can A, go copy paste it out and put it in a query plan and troubleshoot performance tune it yourself in the query plan. Or you could go copy paste and uh, your search control system like Git, GitHub, and you can find, oh, that's where that SQL is coming from. That's the code that's running it. And then you can go fix it from there. So really handy. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and click by CPU. <clears throat> that brings up the report, and this is the upper section of the report, the expensive queries by CPU. And it's got cumulative data, and it's going to show you, since the server was last rebooted, it's going to show you the top 20 uh, queries with the highest CPU. Uh, there's query number one, two, three, four. What do these numbers mean? Nothing right now until you look lower on the page. But before I do, it's also going to give you the uh, CPU in milliseconds, so 250,000 milliseconds. So let's see what's lower on the page. Well, query number one. Let me go back up. Query number one, query number one. And all of this, I, for security purposes, scrambled the SQL. But that's actual SQL that's being executed, and it's many, many, many lines. If you have a big script that's 200 lines, it's going to show you 200 lines, and you can copy-paste that SQL out and go research it, tune it, whatever you need to do. But it's handy to have that kind of access right from inside SQL Server Management Studio. Didn't know it. Thought you used to have to go out to Profiler or use some of the other tools. But nope, you can get to it from SSMS. Uh, this particular query number one has been executed 1,686 times. Uh, and there's some other details off to the right. When you're done with this report, click the little blue arrow that's up in the upper left, and that'll return us back to the parent performance dashboard. Back at the parent performance dashboard, you can see that there's several other sub-reports that we could look at. I'm not going to go into them, but by logical reads, by logical writes, expensive queries, by duration, by physical reads, and by common language runtime. So lots of ways to define what an expensive query is and look at the top 20 and drill down into them. The next SSMS troubleshooting report that we're going to look at is the All Blocking Transactions Report. To navigate to the All Blocking Transactions Report, you right-click on the server you're interested in, hover over Reports, hover over Standard Report, and then select Activity All Blocking Transactions. In the report sample I have here, there's no blocking, and uh, it will tell me the server name, and it says currently there's no blocking transactions on this instance. If there were, it would show me Here's the blocking transaction. Here's the waiting transaction. It'll give me the SQL for blocking and waiting. It'll give me the session IDs for blocking and waiting. Give me the logins. It'll give you a lot of useful information. But I don't have it for demonstration purposes here. But that's a handy one if you have blocking going on. Come in here and take a look at this. Next, we're going to look at the last of the server level reports. There's performance reports, and they're the top queries by X, where X is one of many different factors. To navigate to the performance top queries, you right-click on the given server, hover over reports, hover over standard reports, and then there are several performance batch execution by st uh, statistics, object execution statistics, top queries by this, etc. A whole bunch of these performance-related queries that you can select. We're going to look at the top queries by average CPU time. So we're going to go ahead and click that. And up comes a report. There's an upper and a lower section. 
to the report. This is the upper section with graphs. On the graphs, you see the name of the report, the sub-report. You see the server, I've scrambled it. And you see one through 10, the top 10 queries by average CPU time. And 15 to between about 18 seconds and it tapers off. But these numbers, once again, like a prior report on the chart, correspond to the lower section of the chart, which has a table showing that query number one, query number one, it has the actual query text, which I've scrambled for security reasons, but it gives you the actual security, uh, I'm sorry, uh, SQL that's being executed. So if it's a stored procedure, it tells you, shows this stored procedure code. If it's executing a select, an insert update, whatever, it'll show you the query text, which is really handy for troubleshooting. You can go look that up in source control. You can go tune it in the query plan, in query analyzer, yourself, etc. It's very handy. Uh, and it gave the average CPU time in milliseconds. The other reports up, up are similar, but they're going to give you either total time or average time, and they're going to give you either CPU or I.O. And these two I didn't demo. I didn't find them quite as... They, you know, my server, they're having trouble running. And, you know, on that note, some of these reports, I would try them out on your test environment first. Don't go straight to prod and run these, because a few of these reports are very intense and time-consuming. You wouldn't want to hit your production report with that. So practice the reports first in the test environment, and then the ones that you find useful, go to the higher environment stage, pre-prod, whatever you call it. And then if you need to, and you have the permissions to, read only, then you can run some of them in prod where it makes sense. But work your way up to it. Don't jump straight away to it. Otherwise, like these two, you'll find some that are just too slow. So up until now, we've been looking just at server reports where you right click on a server and go to reports and drill down. Next up was supposed to be the database reports, but I'm skipping them and I'll explain why in a second. So how do you access the database reports? Well, you select whatever database you're interested in, right click it, hover over reports, hover over the standard reports pop up, and then you select your report. But I'm going to skip those because the two good reports I wanted to demo wouldn't work on my test server. The resource locking statistics by object and the object execution statistics. They just ran and ran and after about five minutes timed out and I didn't want to go investigate why. I think I know why. It's because that server has over a thousand object tables on it. It's got a lot of stuff going on. So, and that's a case I mentioned that earlier in this series, this presentation. Don't go run these reports against a production server. Start out and test, figure out what works and runs in a reasonable amount of time, etc. And then once you learn and understand them, then work your way up to the higher environments. Uh, there were several database reports that work fine. The disk usage by X, there's a bunch of different uh, ways you can look at disk usage. The all blocking transactions, the top transactions by X, again, several different flavors. And then the index usage and physical statistics of the index. All those reports are kind of interesting, but didn't make the cut for this presentation. And you can go investigate those on your own. And finally, we're going to look at the SQL Server agent. We're going to right click and look at the reports on that object and see the top jobs report. Now, do note that there are other reports off of other objects, and you can go and explore those yourself. Just right click any given object and see if a reports section comes up on the pop up menu. If it does, follow it through like we've been doing, and you can go explore on your own. But next up, the SQL Server agent top jobs. So there's two reports hang off of the SQL Server agent. There's a job steps execution history, which is really useful because you can see the run history at the step level, not at the job level, if you want to drill down to it. It's very nice. I suggest you go look at it. But what I'm going to demo here is the top jobs. So go down to the SQL Server agent object, right click it, hover over reports, hover over standard reports, and then select top jobs. And the report pops up, showing you in the header, the top jobs, name of the report, the server it's run on. And it gives you a pie chart here in the green box, which shows the number of successful executions. And if there were failed, it would show you the percent that failed. The second green box here is the middle section on the report. It shows you the 20 most frequently executed jobs. It gives you the job name, the owner name, the number of executions, 2,000. The average run duration, one second. The one down here oops, is uh, 389 runs, and it's 12 seconds, etc. So it gives you some good information about the frequently executed jobs. And then the third bottom section on the report shows you the 20 slowest jobs. Job name, owner name, number of executions, 
Wow. 2,500 seconds, probably a backup or something. That's a lot of time. But a very handy report to show you what's going on in the server historically. Thank you for watching, and please, if you found this video helpful, click like and be sure to subscribe below.